Hello everyone, this is PK Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and we're going to talk about DC movies and the upcoming slate for 2023 which is basically the era of the Snyderverse finally reaching its end. Now there might be spoilers for all movies and television series set within the current DC Cinematic Universe so just beware when going into this overall video. So as we all know there's been a relentless debate and discourse over the Zack Snyder era of the DC Universe which started way back in 2013 with Man of Steel. And all that talk it seems will come to an end finally in 2023 where following James Gunn being announced as the new CEO of DC Animation and Films we then had the return and then swift exit of Henry Cavill as Superman also the announcement of Dwayne Johnson as Black Adam and also the intention of promising a younger Superman in the future. So whilst not making an official announcement, it's clear for all to see that all signs are pointing to a reboot of the DC Universe that we'll probably see the beginning of sometime in late 2024, early 2025. But back to the overall discussion and in terms of movies, in terms of this year, we will have four projects overall. We'll have Shazam! Fury and the Gods, the sequel to the first film from 2019, releasing on March the 17th, 2023. The Flash, starring Urza Miller, is scheduled for release on June the 16th, 2023. Blue Beetle, starring Zolo Madureira, is coming on August the 18th, 2023. And then we have Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, due for release on December the 25th, 2023. So as mentioned before, the Snyderverse will all but be rebooted after these movies. But are any of them actually worth paying attention to because of the upcoming reboot? And if so, which ones are the most standout in terms of attention? Now, if I'm being honest, the only real project of any real interest for me is The Flash. The movie itself, of course, has so many dynamics around it, mostly off screen, of course, in terms of Ezra Miller and his many alleged misdemeanors over the years. And when we look at it, the whole issue around him probably warrants a movie itself. And it will be interesting to see how audiences respond to him as the movie approaches its release. Now to be fair, it's been fairly quiet regarding Ezra for the last couple of months. He's obviously taken a back seat to the other actors in terms of drama. But will people forget about what happened or allegedly happened with him? The ongoing drama and discourse around his actions once the marketing starts to kick in for this film. We do know that a Super Bowl trailer is shortly due for the film around about February of this year. And reaction to that trailer will be the first real sign of whether people will ignore the Urza Miller controversy and go and see the film. Now, as we all know, the project will adapt the Flashpoint storyline from the comics concerning Barry Allen going back in time to prevent his mother's murder and inadvertently creating a dystopian alternate timeline. After fixing the crisis, it sets about a new continuity within the comics. Back then, it was the new 52. So this really should be the final film of the Snyder First projects released this year if it were planned properly but it will be very interesting to see what happens at the end of the movie, what cameos will there be, what final end credits or hints will there be at some sort of new universe, will they indeed tie it to the upcoming James Gunn vision or will it have a completely resolute and conclusive end to its story. Now right now I'd probably say that The Flash will probably hit a maximum of 500 to 600 million worldwide. It is a superhero movie and it is DC. So despite the many issues with the Snyderverse, that still carries some weight in terms of the genre. But again, we can gauge more feedback when the first full trailer arrives in February as to how successful the movie will be. So we then talk about Shazam! Fury of the Gods and a couple of months ago I felt that this would have been a very successful movie after the good reception from the first film which many have deemed one of the best of the entire Snyderverse. But there's been a distinct lack of hype even after the first trailer which debuted with no real sense of what's at stake or a villain. It very much captures the same brighter upbeat tone from the first film with much enhanced special effects and action sequences. Now we'll probably get some more context when the second trailer arrives but it's looking at this stage that this will likely only gross as much as the original perhaps even slightly less and unless it grosses over a billion dollars at the box office which it probably won't this will likely be the last time that we see Shazam in this current iteration with Sakurai Levi in a main role. We then talk about Blue Beetle a project that I'm still surprised is getting a cinematic release like the recently cancelled Batgirl project, it was originally scheduled for a HBO Max release on streaming before WB changed plans. I'm still actually surprised that we're getting a Blue Beetle movie at all when you consider that he's very much a low level tier character for DC 
it will presumably have a much lower budget so there'll be no pressure for it to gross big at the box office but out of all of the projects within DC for 2023 this movie has the least interest for me and probably for a lot of people and there will be very little or no bearing on this movie in terms of the closing out of the Snyderverse. Which then brings us finally to Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, the sequel to the 2018 movie which currently stands as the only DC movie to gross over $1 billion at the box office and it's for that reason why I believe that Lost Kingdom will be the highest grossing DC movie of 2023. Jason Momoa's interpretation has proved very popular with the Snyder fans, plus he already brings his own fan base to the table, and the first movie was very well liked by a lot of audiences. Now whilst the first film did very much embrace the comic book tone and aesthetic, it was very uneven in its pacing and slightly overblown and noisy, so I would like to hope that the sequel has a bit more poise and sophistication about it. But again, the eternal issue is still there. Why should anybody really care as these movies are released? Now the Snyder fans may indeed be split, some of them may indeed support these movies because they want to see the universe close out and maybe they'll have some faint hope that if they turn out for these films and they go on to generate money then Warner Brothers may do some sort of about turn and try to continue the universe, I very much doubt that. It's very unlikely that we're going to get a multiverse structure than what we're going to see with the MCU where on the one hand they further James Gunn's vision and they also continue Zack Snyder's vision as well. I think that's very unlikely at this stage. The DC brand just isn't strong enough to invest itself in any kind of multiverse venture. Now some people will mention Matt Reeves' Batman, but let's be honest here, it's very likely that a sequel to that movie will probably be the last instalment before we see James Gunn's vision get put forward. Some of the Snyder fans may ignore all of these movies in a sense of protest that the universe is coming to the end. A lot of more original DC fans may not care at all about these projects and will just wait patiently to see what James Gunn has to offer when his new reboot arrives. Whatever the case, it does bring to end the Snyderverse. Ultimately, for me, a failed initiative in the DC characters. I've stated multiple times that if you handled the DC characters right, it would be an even bigger and more successful universe than the MCU and it still represents for me the biggest mishandling of an iconic franchise and IP even worse than what we saw with the Star Wars franchise. But I'll likely carry out a post-mortem of the Snyderverse at a later video but for now in assessing the four movies that are due for release in 2023 I would probably say The Flash is most interesting alongside Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom perhaps and I have very little interest for either Shazam or indeed Blue Beetle. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings on a slate of DC movies coming in 2023, very much marking the end of the Snyderverse before we see the new era and reboot of James Gunn of the DC heroes. Let me know what you think in the comments below, do you really care about any of these films or are you super excited and you're hoping secretly that if they all go on to be massively successful that somehow the Snyderverse could continue in some way shape or form. Or are you a DC fan who doesn't really care about the Snyderverse and you're just waiting to see for all these movies coming to an end before you move forward with the new reboot? Let me know what you think in the comments and of course when all of the movies release I will provide both non-spoiler and spoiler reviews and also updates on how well they perform in terms of the box office so look out for all of that within the channel. And if you have any other suggestions regarding any other movies or television series or any other issues that you'd like to see me cover within the entertainment industry, also let me know and I will see if I can provide further commentary for you on those topics within the future. Please also hit and like those subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now, take care of yourselves and I will see you very very soon.